Yo, what is going on guys? Godrecton here today, bringing you a VOD review gameplay video. So as you guys might know from reading my community tab where I posted a pretty lengthy, well not, not so lengthy, but like a few paragraphs about what I'm doing and what's coming to my channel. Um, I'm going to be leaving for a month as I'm making this video. So within December until January, I'll be out of the country. With that being said, there won't be a lot of content being posted within this time. And I've kind of already just like kind of went on like next mentally with the season i think it's a bit pretty good season for me i did pretty well but ultimately i don't have a lot of time to play however within this time as well and just like wanting to get some videos out there i did want to try and make some vod review videos and some games i've been playing have been off stream and i felt like a good use of these games is to vod review them and just explain what i was doing in each of these games so for this time that i'm inactive on youtube i might have some of these games on there if i have enough time to record them if not, then in the future, I'll definitely do more when I'm playing off stream and try to go into a high depth, you know, an anal analysis of the game. But with that being said, though, in this game, I'm playing against Warwick here. This is a VOD that I had the previous day as I'm making this. I played against this Warwick and it was pretty, pretty good gameplay, I would say. Pretty easy win. And I know a lot of people do struggle the Warwick matchup. I do also have a commentary on my YouTube, which I did play against a Warwick that included Grasp. And Grasp Warwick isn't really the strongest iteration, in my opinion. If anything, I think it's pretty easy to beat that one. However, with Lethal Tempo, that does cause a lot more problems for some, certain people. And being that I'm on my alt account, which is in, like, near Master's Elo, it's like D2 on here. I did play against a Warwick main, which had, like, 600k. Pretty versed on the champion, so I thought, you know, it was a pretty good game to also go over. But let me explain, though. Why is this matchup hard for certain people? Well, the deal is, is that Warwick is very deceptively tanky. Being that he takes barrier, he has a bunch of healing in his kit with his passive. And the lower he gets, the more healing he also has. And he also has, like, random ass attack speed that he gets from his W, I believe. Like, the lower health people are. I might be mistaken on that one. Anyhow, the champion has a lot of cheesy mechanics that people don't look out for. And when you are playing top lane, a lot of this type of style will catch you off guard. And it has caught me off guard a lot of times too when I was originally learning the matchup. So just to explain real quickly too, because they have a Warwick with Lethal Tempo and they have a Kane, if we was to 2v2 this right here, I would instantly get destroyed and so would Kane. So every time you're playing against these type of champs, you just want to say, look, I'm not fighting this. We're going next on this idea. So here, I just tell my jungler not to fight this. We do get like a little bit of damage here. However, in another game where Warwick's walking with a jungler, you're never going to win that. Same with any other lethal tempo champion level 1. I see I also stop his back, delaying his uh, camp timer. By the time he gets to his camp, he misses probably two auto attacks worth on um, a camp. So it's pretty big. Going to go here and leash my jungler. If I didn't have Leash, I probably would already be in the lane, just waiting. Warwick would either walk to Tribush and cheese me level 1 with auto attacks, or he'll wait in this bush. So if I get intel on either of them, like where he's going to come from, it'll help me like avoid that scenario. So it's always pretty good just to, you know, be wary of that as well and have that info right away. <coughs> in fact, as I was walking to lane, I figured that maybe he's waiting in the bush. Like I was really expecting it. And if that happened, I probably would be fucked because I didn't have E-Start. I would never try to fully skill an ability into certain matchups like, let's say, Olaf or Darius without knowing where the laner actually is. And being that I didn't know where Warwick was, I probably didn't want to skill my Q. I probably wanted to wait on that until I get through this bush. And then I can decide if I want to take E to disengage or take Q for the laning phase. So, number one. The thing that you need to do in this matchup is push. You need to get level 2 before your opponent. So right away, I'm going to go for Qs, hit the minions here. I want to keep my Fury up. The way we, we the way we beat Warwick is by literally just spamming Qs in the lane. So, got to walk in, Q. Don't auto-attack in there because I'll be taking a lot of minion damage. You see here? I auto-attack this one time, and all these caster creeps aggro onto me, and so do the melees. So sometimes intentionally, I will just walk up and just go for a Q. When needed. And I do it with Gangplank as well. Because that ends up turning the minion aggro onto the Warwick. So I get level 2 here. Instantly go for a nasty trade. And just like that with Conqueror as well in D-Blade. He cannot do anything. 
I probably should explain my rune choice too, real quickly. So I, I go Conqueror because the whole lane is about stats. If you have more stats than Warwick, he cannot win. Conqueror gives my Q a lot of damage. I get a lot of extra healing. Warwick cannot really compete with that in the pure 1v1, especially level 6. So having all that AD earlier on for this level 2 as well, just gives us this gigantic advantage in health, attack damage, just everything really. And Warwick with lethal tempo can't really out sustain that. If he had Grasp, he could probably heal back some of the damage, but because he doesn't, he's forced to use Potion here and he just gets completely denied. The thing about this lane too is that Warwick has only single target damage. He can't wave clear the minions. And because he can't wave clear the minions, Renekton can easily get level 2 and go for this like all in. And any matchup where your laner lacks wave clear with like a single target damage ability, you can literally just go for push and then all in level 2. And that also um, sets you up for the level 3 all in as well, potentially. Or even level 2 if you can get the kill there. But yeah, to go back a bit, I have my Fury built up. Save it correctly on the level 2. Just going to go in and just showing it again just for the sake of like how I did it. So EQ in. Getting powered E right after. And just keep going down. <clears throat> At this point, I can zone him from the minion wave and keep hitting him. So Warwick's completely fucked here. He really cannot do anything. The only thing I need to be wary about is jungle gank. Which is going to be around 3 minute time. So I want to ward around that too. But like, I don't know everything that happens off by art. So I might miss some certain details. But um, yeah, I'm just going off like what I kind of remember too. And I'm also re-watching it for the sake of... Also realizing anything as well. But to go back here, I'm also trading Q every chance I get. At this point, I have enough Fury. I'm just like holding it for my level my level 3. If he walks in here, I can go in. As you see here, I E back in for the 50 Fury. And I go in, he barriers, and it's too late. Nothing can really be done about that. So just like that, he's pretty dead. Pretty clean combo if we just go back to it. If you want me to explain what it is, I have my Fury up here. I also have enough Fury to get in Power W. Off the uh, Fury timing. Look at this slow. E, hut 10 Fury there. Get my Empowered Q and the Q cancel auto. I'm at 44 Fury. I E to the side to get the Fury. Empowered W on top. Also Ignite there. He has 5 health. Sometimes it's better to wait with the W before he barriers. But in that moment, I just had the kill range regardless. And then another auto attack and he's dead. So just like that, we kill Warwick. He really cannot do anything. I think with the help of um, D-Blade being a common item now too, with the 100 health and the 10 AD, it remains an even better choice for an Acton with Conqueror as well into these type of matchups. So you're allowed to be a lot more aggressive and have a lot more power in the lane that you didn't have before too. I mean, you did have it technically, but at the same time, like it's just a better style item that helps you in various scenarios. Looking at that team comp here as well, guys, they have a lot of AD, so it's basically a no-brainer that I am going to go Plaid Steel Caps here. And against Warwick too, it's very strong because his um, attacks are also on hit. So I'm basically countering that um, with his passive and all that. So, you know, it just remains a really good choice as well to either rush boots if you want to. Or just go straight into the Gore Drinker then boots as well. This game I do go for more Bruiser style as well. So I do go pick up the Gore Drinker as well eventually. Right now I'm just waiting for the wave to bounce back. Nothing else to really do. Just observing, you know, probably just AFK here. <laughs> Uh, mess with your music. We listened to a lot of hard star recently as well. Probably changing playlist, I think. So just last thing minions here, trying to build my fury up as well. The ability max this game, I believe, was three point Q into W max. At this point, like I have the wave clear, and then I can just go W max. The more Ws I have against a melee, the more damage I have, and the more prevention tools I have as well against the Warwick. So that's kind of like why I went that as well. But like I'm doing that. Q first for Fury, Auto W, Auto E, two Autos actually, then E. Doesn't use his Fear properly. If Warwick players greed onto that, it's just because they're trying to like squeeze any bit of like... It, it's basically a way to punish people over committing, and then that's where they can Fear, then get all the health back, the little tempo stacks. So it's very important. As soon as Warwick goes for the... If you dash in, then he insta Ws. You want to hold your damage, by the way. It's, it's like a Garen, for example. If Garen is to W, you're not going to use your abilities on it. You're going to wait it out, then use your abilities, because he gets damage reduction, he gets tenacity, and same with Warwick, he gets tenacity as well. So there's really no... Not tenacity, sorry. He gets damage reduction. So because he gets damage reduction, there's no point blowing anything on that. So it's just best to chill <coughs> in those scenarios and wait it out, or instantly disengage too. 
which I'd rather recommend into Warwick, of course. So I drop my ward down. At this point, my goal is just to do as much damage as possible, try and get the plating. I probably do want the wave to bounce, but I'm a little bit greedy in this game where I go for these trades, get him low, and I plan to dive in my head. But the deal is, you can't really dive a Warwick when he has barrier, and he also has the healing that he does have. So every time you're in this situation, you want the wave to die. Like obviously poke of Q and whatever, but don't push the wave in. Literally let it push back to you. Get the minion wave under your tower on the side, and then you have all the room to like go for fights, and he cannot do anything about it. So again, go for a W, just being super aggro. The thing is, as you see here, I don't know what health it was. Let's look closely at this health. So what is he gain from this minion? 22. So he gets like 20 health per every like hit, you know? So if we keep pushing in, he's going to be inherently healing. And then he's getting 100 off Q as well. He also got quite a bit more there as well. <coughs> so my mistake here is that I wanted to zone him. I wanted to zone him from the minion wave, but I just wanted to like go for fight. Do I even get the kill here? I don't think I do, actually. No, I don't. Yeah, so, just imagine, right? If I played my combo a little bit better, my thought process, I could have went in. Also, I wanted to go on the level 6, but my dash was also really weird. I wanted... If I'm going to do anything, I want to E down this way instead of this way. So I'm on top of him, and then I can go for R, W, Ignite, or like W, R, Ignite, and then he's... He has nowhere to really run. So as long as I dash down here, he probably could have died, to be quite honest. Yeah, he gets the moon speed out, unfortunately, though, as well. Yeah, if I just let the wave push, I get every kill on him. And this is like a trend that you're going to see. Now, here's the thing. I ult because I want to dive him, but he ends up being too tanky. And this, is a, this again, is because it's a Warwick on the tower. And every minion here is, like, healing for 60, 70, like... It's just crazy. There's just nothing I can do. Yeah, I ult for Fury and try and go in. And I also waited on the W. Okay, so I'm waiting for my W again. This point, I want to bait his ability out. So I W beforehand. I don't hit him. He comes out, and then I want to go in. But then I'm thinking he has Barrier. Barrier has the same cooldown as my Ignite. Or maybe it's a little bit less. I think it's the same cooldown. As you can see here, I'm a little bit frustrated. But in my head... I just had to let the wave push, and I had more opportunities to kill him. So again, in that situation, don't do what I did. Just let the wave bounce here. Let it bounce back. I can zone him off the wave. I can even just walk up and zone him, right? But if I let it push, or even plan my fire out better, I can literally kill him. I'm one minion away. I can kill him any time here. Big mistake from me. And at this point, I think it's just a matter of me having to play it better as well here. And maybe even go in to auto-attack him. But he has barrier as well. So it's it's always hard trying to dive a Warwick. As you can see here. It's very hard. At this point, I lose my kill opportunity. But it's okay. I'm still even health. But I have to be careful of Warwick. Now, he's 6. But I look at his mana. He doesn't have ult yet. He cannot get ult. He's 45 mana. So this would be my window to fight. But he has barrier as well. So again... I'm forward planning what, I, what I'm supposed to do here. If I do get my back and I get level 6, I win the fight. If I try to coin flip a fight here, I can die. He has Q healing, he has barrier, lethal tempo. This is where people make the mistake, right? He's deceptively tanky and deceptively strong. In this situation, this is where Warwick thrives. And if I'm to fall into this trap of playing into that, that's where I'm going to die and let him snowball. Oops, my music came on within the uh, clip. Okay. Or video, I should say. I do I do get my Fury here, though. I can still play for outplay. It's definitely possible, but I need to out-sustain him, right? So I need my Empowered Qs. I need to hit him in the minion wave, and I'll get my health back. At this point, I decide to back, because there's just nothing to do here. I shove in wave, I get my back, and then I can just reset on this. Warwick is not the best... Pusher. Okay, I actually stay here. I'm very greedy. In fact, I manipulate the minion wave here, so I get a slow pushback. Because I know, I'm aware now in my head, I'm like, okay, I can't dive him, but I can get the wave to shove back. And if I can do that, I have more ways to, to kill him. I can also freeze him off the minion wave. As you see here, he can't really walk up. He's also scared of me. 
I'm pretty sure he could be a bit more confident, but I also do have item advantage over him at this point in the game as well. Yeah, I'm just playing into the fact that I'm waiting for a bounce. I'm waiting for my ult to tick up as well. And I'm just making sure that, like, I'm not making any mistakes as well. I don't want to throw the lane away. Yeah, I'm just trying to let the wave push. I'm not trying to queue the wave or anything. Hopefully, I don't do it. <laughs> That's why I, I shouldn't do that, but I don't remember fully. Okay, so I do end up doing it. <laughs> nice one, Ryan. <laughs> Well, this stage, I'm just going to shove. Again, this probably isn't the cleanest game, looking back at it. But I am just explaining my thought process, nevertheless, on what I should do. Warwick has mana for ult here, and he can do some stuff. But I'm just going to go for a little bit of fight. EQE in, and get out. Now I finally back. I have a lot of gold here for gorging components, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Just skip that a little bit. Getting that big push in as well also allowed me to buy time to also run back to the lane. And again, as I was saying too, because Warwick doesn't have a lot of tools to push out the wave, it does leave him in a situation where he's unable to push back fast enough. But the wave might even anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I'm just ex explaining as like another concept. But yeah, we got my whip here. Got some health as well. Health's pretty good into Warwick as well as a stat. The more health you have, you're like obviously the best survivability too. Through his uh, onslaught of auto attacks. Just shove him wave to like try and get Warwick. W maybe. Or even just the fact that I can make him miss minions. And I want Plight too. I see Plight slow. I'm just waiting. Go for auto Q. This point I'll just ignore him. He, he really doesn't do anything at this point. Once Renekton gets his whip and he doesn't die level like let's say one to three the matchup becomes pretty fine now pay attention here pay attention what i'm about to do and i'm gonna explain it all real quickly in a sec it's our queue go for the ult now okay so we get the kill there right pretty decently played nevertheless you know but let me explain what actually happened here and where people can make a mistake so, let's go back here, right? So, I'm going for Q. I build my Fury up. Warwick is now... Has components. And he wants to fight me. He has everything up. He has a better mana pool. Better health pool. He basically has every tool to try to fight me here. You know? As I expected. I W out of safety here. I build my Fury up. However, this is not a kill range for me. This is not a kill range. I could just, like, press alt. I could ignite auto attack him. But the thing is, he has barrier. He has lethal tempo. And alt. I'm not going to win this down the road. I, do, I just don't. My cooldowns are too long. His level tempo is stacking up right now. In the fight, I'm realizing I don't win this. So I have my Fury built up. Warwick is getting his auto attacks off. The boot spy actually helps me here because I can kite him out towards the bush and delay his uh, stacks. Warwick has to get these stacks here. So he's going to follow me. And I'm just kiting him out, you see? Like, watch it go down. Even Red Trinkets to keep it up. That's how he wins. At this point, he goes back to the minion wave. It starts ticking down. I'm cutting back out. And now I can start fighting again. This is where I go for my kill window. Auto Q. I ult. Frame power. I ult there. To get my fury up. Build my autos here. W is now up. It's primed. He barriers right after. <laughs> I don't know why there. But he does. And then I just, you know, finish the kill. Whip Q. And just like that we get the kill. So there's a lot of mechanics involved there that probably people would miss out on. But if you can kite the lethal tempo stacks and... Holds your W for the barrier. It remains pretty key there. And with the ult as well, you just stat check on top of that. So Warwick's forced to ult in that scenario. Otherwise, I kill him. I actually max Q here too. I probably would rather want to max the W. But Q isn't bad. Maybe I also did it just due to the fact that Q is my main tool of doing damage in this lane. And also being able to, being able to sustain. So I don't think that's bad either. You can either Q max or you know, Q, uh, three point Q into W max. I think it really depends on the style and the way you want to play the game. But here, um, I wanted that sustained just so I could like have better stats over him in the fights of my ult and Q. So it's probably why I did that actually. Let's skip a little bit here. So I have the, I have the wave on my side. I think at this point, I'm just looking on the map. I see Warwick instantly on the map. So by the way, again, as I was talking about earlier, if I have the wave on this side, this is perfect for me. I can get any fight off. I can bully Warwick. I can freeze on him. That's great. 
Warwick has to roam. I don't spy it right away. I'm actually... I don't know what I'm waiting for right away, actually. I'm probably just tabbed out. Yeah, I see his mid lane, and then I push in. I think I catch it here. Yeah, there we go. I was probably doing something at that time, because I was also, like, off stream. And also not doing a commentary. Just saw in the minion minions here now. Just pushing in. Warwick died. This is gigantic for me. At this stage, I'm abusing his death and his roam just by taking the tower. So we take the tower here now. Pretty good stuff. So let's fast forward. I don't know why I'm so tapped out here. <laughs> I really don't remember what I was doing because it was pretty late. Wait, I don't remember. When did I play this? Oh, I think I remember now, actually. <laughs> okay, I think I remember. Well, ignore the tabbing out. So at this point in the game, when I take tower, I can just raid the jungle. Now, I misclicked here. I misclicked at this point. I just want to get that out there. I misclicked. <laughs> I tried to ping and then I misclicked it, which was like really silly of me. Yeah, at this point in the game, we just want to go in the jungle, take camps, ward, apply info for my team. Because we spied him out there, my jungle's able to do the dragon too. Very important thing when you're a top laner, by the way. Going into jungle, granting vision for your team is a really big asset. And the game's not just about you. Like, you might not, you might know where the jungle is, but your team doesn't. And if you can, like, always spot that out for your team and even ping it or ward it, it's going to remain a big key into gain objectives and also denying your team from dying to a jungler. And if the jungle can't get kills by being seen all the time, then the game's unplayable. So keep that in mind as well when you're playing against junglers and stuff like that. So sorry for the noise. I don't have a uh, noise on my VOD, unfortunately. It's just, like, music. So, yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to get copyrighted, so I just want to bring that out there as well. So what do I do now? How does this matchup go for me or Warwick? Well, Warwick is pretty much useless. The champ is very bad overall. I feel like I feel like he's one of the worst champs you could play. He's just a cheese champ. The champ either like gets ahead in lane and has like a way of just ulting people and being annoying, or he just doesn't do anything if he's even or behind. At this stage, I shove in, I roam because it was a fight mid. See three people here. I'm level 11. I'm literally giga fed at this point. So I'm just going to auto him down, start ulting. Flash on the Talon, just because I want to get the kill. I want to kill everyone. If I just E in, he's going to E over the wall and remain difficult for me to get him. This stage, I'm just killing everyone. I'm just so fed. I have good farm. Everything's just perfectly well here. W Gore Drinker. Insane, right? Just really so far ahead. No one can really touch me at this point. And when you're this a fed, you just remain unkillable. I can literally just build for the enemy team now. They have a Kane, Talon. There's just so much there that I can counter for myself. They don't really have a good team comp against a Renekton. I could even go for a bot dive here if I was looking as well, but instead I go for the crab. In fact, what happens bot lane? Okay, they do get the kill. I didn't need to. I could have looked though for an opportunity. That matters more. This stage, I'm just taking everything that I can get. I have 2k gold. I'm going to go back on that. I can build Black Cleaver. I can build Starrux or even Sojin. There's a lot of options I could have here. It just really depends on my mindset. I wouldn't mind a Cleaver, obviously, for the Shred. I can also pivot this into Sojin if I want to change my mind. Sojin is good because I get Moon Speed. I get AD cooldown. The Cleaver gives me more health. Uh, well, it gives. I think it gives less health, actually. But it gives me Shred, cooldown. Like It's just pretty good overall. Everyone's there on the map at the moment. I'm just going to go into the top side again. Just push out the wave. I don't know when Dragon was. Dragon must be coming up soon. So at least I'm just prepping this as well if it does come up. In fact, I don't think it's coming up right away. My sense of time is not with the game because I'm also doing this a day later. So it's probably also why I'm not getting everything correct. But I'm just explaining as well, like just the matchup theory or two. As you can see here at this point though, Warwick is rushing Bork. Bork is a good buy if he's ahead. But if you're not ahead with Bork Rush, like, you just lose health. Like, look at this. All his health just gets melted, but he does also heal a little ton up. So, again, doesn't really matter. He has a lot of invisible health. At this point, I'm just going for any fight I can get. Trying to get him off the tower. If I can keep him here and away from my team, that's also very good. So, me doing this trade here is really good. I see Talon now. 
Talon is. <laughs> I'm just wasting that time. Applying this pressure in the side lanes, being fed, is really big because they know they can't kill me unless I try to go in and do something stupid. And they do have the CC for that. They have Warrior Cult and the Talon damage too. I waste Talon's time. My team takes a tower, bot lane. They're advancing mid lane. Warrior cast the back now. No one dies. It's perfect. Dragon's coming up. My job is just to be annoying. It is to just play inside lane and just do that, basically. So here, where it comes back out, I take tower. Take minion here. And now I'm going to go into the jungle. Can take camps, can ward, whatever I might want to do. We have info that Kane is bot side. I'm just going to take the Gromp. Try to get every bit of gold that I can get. Any way that I can also deny the jungler is also really big here. So another really big asset to... You know, being ahead and putting them behind. Kane dies, Warwick goes mid. I think I go for wave here now too, if I remember. Yeah, I mean, I should do. Warwick's there. At this stage, Warwick is just having a bad game. Like, he's just tilted. He's trying to get something, but my team's just too far ahead. And also, ignore that cannon uh, miss there. <laughs> you did not see that, I can assure you. Yeah, so here I actually go Sojin. I wasn't sure which one I went. Like, there's no bad choice here, necessarily. But I do think Sojin's better, because they're also a lot more squishier. The armor shred is still fine, but I don't think it's really needed. Snow um, Sojin's a better snowball item, too, in comparison with the moon speed. AD, health, cooldown. It's just a perfect item, honestly. Next season, it's also going to be hard nerfed as well and change into a different item. And I don't believe it's good on Renekton, because it doesn't proc on his W. So it's not it's not going to get used anymore, I feel like, when it comes to Renekton. The haste is good, like the way it works, like with the passive, but that's like the only thing keeping it good. Everything else is pretty much wasted. But back onto the topic of the video, I'm just taking any gold I can get at this point. Taking Crab. As a top laner, you just want to be doing this. Just soaking everything up that you can. Have your own side lane. Use your lead here to pressure. Watch the map at all times. If you have teleport, you can TP on the map. Really big. Also, if you would ask me, would I rather go Ignite or TP into Warwick, even if I knew the matchup, I would still go Ignite. It's like Darius. If you don't take a combat summoner against Darius, he's just going to beat you. You lose out on stats and his bleed is just too big. And even his Q heal if you get hit by it. Having, having Ignite is what makes the matchup really, really easy, by the way. It's why you don't really see good Renekton players ever lose it. Renekton's fast comboing and Ignite is just too much of a threat for Darius. Same with Warwick too. If you take the Ignite, you can't really do anything. Well, he can, but again, with good play and just like playing off his like strengths and turning into weaknesses by being aware, he cannot do anything. Whatsoever. At this stage, we're just pushing for tower here. Getting the Inib next. Before I get the inib though, I'm going to go top lane. Their team is spawning. If I'm there to greed, I'm, we're going to miss out on like getting something else. And I want to stay near my team as well. So I have the Zion next to me. Do our flash ult. Play is not worth it though. I want to get Baron. If we can get Baron, the game's over. That's all we need to do. Going to greed. I'm going to give the ADC the farm here because ADC is better started role to like if you're giving gold to an adc that's just going to use their range better than you are it's just better i'm renekton's a melee champ so zaya's is a no-brainer what am i doing at this point i think i ping baron i mean i want to do baron you see i ping right away I, this is macro understanding right like i know i know the assignment right if we just get the baron like it's great now my team doesn't come here so i'm just popping gold at this stage in the game, it doesn't matter. If I ult, like with this, it just... I'm going to get my ult up in the next minute anyway, so it's still fine. It's also ticking on cooldown right away too, so by the time I actually kill Baron, it's 50 seconds. And we have Baron for like another two minutes, so it's perfectly fine here. Just want to get this wave into reset. A little bit light compared to my team's recalls, which is bad for tempo. What am I doing next? I could just sell D-Blade. But instead, I want to go for Raptors. I mean, I did want Raptors in my end. But I also... If I wanted a better tempo back, I just... 
I recall, I recall sell D blade, get cleaver, and then I'm on the map. But now I'm forced to stay. So that's also a mistake of mine, right? If I just looked at that in the moment, I could have backed and I already would have been like, um, where's my mouse? Yeah. Would have been here at the time. So I'm also near my team. All having a whole item completed, by the way. <clears throat> Actually, Kane now. And the game's just over here. So, pretty good game, nevertheless, you know? Pretty happy with how the game went. Um, there's some things that I could learn myself that I also wanted to teach you guys, just on, like, the matchup understanding. I think at this point, we just run down mid, and I'm just typing. Run down mid here, end the game. And just like that, um, game's practically over here. Pretty clean game from us. So overall, guys, just to conclude this VOD review, Ignite is very good into Warwick because it's healing and the damage onto that. It also makes you not spend 900 gold, which could be used to towards a pickaxe with the spike whip and other items instead. Gorge Rinker is very good. Plight still caps is also a must when you can get that as well. Uh, letting the wave be on your side is also very good. Being able to fight him and have better opportunities to you know kite towards your tower and not be under his own tower to get ulted or even life steal back to health if you do damage to him is very important. Saving W for the barrier is also very good. Uh, any other notes that I'm trying to think of right now? I'm trying to think while it's late. Hmm. And lethal tempo. If you play, outplay the lethal tempo by spacing his autos and kiting towards your minions and just playing methodically and not going for greedy stuff, that's where you'll win the matchup. But with that being said though, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something today. If you did, make sure to leave in the comments below. If you like this kind of videos, let me know as well. I'll gladly do more of these. It's very easy for me to. Very chill. I can articulate and present you in more ways to win and do better as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video. With that being said though, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out and have a good one.